I thought for a second you guys were I just twins started to that. dance. I was like, twins? I literally just started to dance. Let me turn it off. It's so on. You uncool. got that side? I want this side. Okay, this is my good side. side. How's right, what do we have? Three hours? All right, let's go. I heard it was a little bit more. There's a lot, of, there's a lot that goes into building a seven-figure Facebook group. We need at least three hours. At least. <clears throat> at least. All right, let's see. Who's heard of Lab Coat Agents? I just want to show of hands. Yeah, who's heard of them? Oh. All right, cool. Who hasn't? One well, it's, person? It's about two people. All right, we'll, we'll deal with you later. No, but what I was going to say was Lab Coat Agents, if you're unfamiliar, is the largest real estate Facebook group on planet Earth. We didn't tell us that. Facebook told us that, which was kind of cool. That was cool. Just a few real quick stats before we get into it. <clears throat> 105,000 members. We uh, get about half a million comments, posts, and reactions every month. And our video views are way over like half a million video views. And our blog, labcodeagents.com, gets about you know, 15 to 20,000 visitors a month. So it's a lot of fun. And we're gonna talk to you about how that kind of started, right? Like it didn't start with that in mind. It started as a place for people in the real estate industry to just collaborate and share best practices. And it grew really quickly because I think that that is a place in our industry where that's definitely lacking. And we're yeah. gonna take you through that process as we figured it out by accident and we actually created a plan for you. We're so you still do doing thing. it by accident, by the way. <laughs> kind of. <right>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, it all starts with a story here. And I want to take you back to Sam Walton. Everybody familiar with Sam Walton, creator of Walmart, 1962? All right, so Sam Walton had an idea here. He, hey, I just recognize you. How are you? Sam Walton had an idea here, and it was to help the average American save money and increase their quality of life. That was his vision. That was his just cause. But what happened is, after he died, you fast forward to 2009, you have the CEO who comes in and says, wow, I'm going to focus on growth, I'm going to focus on money, and my objective is to minimize the cost for products and then send them to the US and help the average American by just minimizing the cost. He forgot about helping the employees on making their life better, helping the average American and making their life better. And what happened is you see the Walmart that we have today. They lost that just cause. Well, let's not forget when Sam Walton was in charge People wanted Walmart to come into their towns. Right. And now they're dreading it. I mean, it affects real estate values because the mom and pop shops just know within a matter of time they're going out of business. Uh, people don't really enjoy working there, but they kind of have no choice because they live there and they, they can't afford to move out of the, of the city or out of the state. So it has turned from this tribe that Sam Walton created to this conglomerate of putting them, themselves first instead of the employees. And so the reason why we're telling you this is because we built a Facebook group that is now, has now become a tribe. And if you're not listening to those people, uh, you're, they're going to look through you really easily and really quickly. So it's sad what's happened to Walmart because had, they had a really great thing going. And if you don't keep that, if you don't put your customers first or your group members first or your tribe first, Things are gonna go down real hill really fast for them. So keep that in the back of your mind as you hear this, so you can think, we want a vision, we want a just cause, we want to stand for something that's more than just money and growth. Because when you give the value, the money's gonna come. But if you're thinking about the money first, it's gonna take a heck of a lot longer. So let's get into it. The most popular social networks. We don't have to tell you that Facebook is still the most popular. We heard you know, last year that people were canceling their Facebook accounts at a, a rapid rate, and with all this data breaching they're being accused of, you know, people are logging off. But that's not the case. People are still trusting Facebook more and more every single day, regardless of what they're going through in the news. Yeah. And, they, and about 2.3, what is it, 2.3 billion people are on Facebook right now? Is that about right? That's about right. We yeah. have the stats, 2.23, but that's the next slide there. But you can see YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat. LinkedIn has, uh, LinkedIn has groups now too. Uh, they don't work the same as Facebook's, 
We have YouTube doing a good job and Instagram catching up too, which is nice to see. Yeah. But the one that holds that community together, the one that drives most of the traffic, the one that can make you the most money is still Facebook. And we have actually noticed that in our group, even though the average age of a real estate agent is about 55 or 60, the average age of agents in our group are hovering around 35 years old. So that's really the main age range on Facebook as a whole right now. And so that's why for real estate, it's becoming very powerful. All right, so let's get into some cool stats. Like I said, 2.23 billion people are logging into Facebook every single month as of this year. And that's actually up 8% over the same quarter of 2018. Now, the reason for these stats is we want to show you that Facebook is still around. It's still super strong. So those of you who doubt that there's an opportunity still in groups, we wanted to show you these stats first to show that there is an opportunity to still grow a community and be able to make money. We're going to show you how, but these stats were important. We won't go over all of them. You could just... But the one you should pay attention to, because that's what we're going to talk about, is number four. 400 million people are active in Facebook groups every single month. And that's a huge, huge number. So why are Facebook groups, Facebook groups important? That's what we're going to talk about today. They're important for a lot of reasons. Well, organic reach all over Facebook is down. And groups are important because you're in a community with like-minded people and the reach goes a heck of a lot further. Tristan and I can reach 105,000 people with one post. I don't know. I mean, I post on my regular Facebook page and, you know, what are you getting? Three, four likes? No, what you don't see on the back end is Facebook will track every single person that sees the post, the video. So to us, we can see that every post is seen about 50,000 times. Right, but on the front end, you only see you get maybe 1,000 likes, 500 likes. That's, the numbers are behind everything that you don't see. But you're still impacting. And that's what matters here with groups. So Facebook is definitely becoming more committed to privacy. I liked it when it was more romantic. I like that more romantic. Facebook is definitely more committed to privacy. Uh, friends and family in your newsfeed is going to be showing up a heck of a lot more. That means your business page reach, as if it wasn't already restricted, is going to become even more restricted. You're going to start seeing more pictures of Aunt Millie's cat than you are about the local realtor in town who has an, has an open house. Yeah. Facebook wants you to engage more with your family and friends. There's going to be less content from businesses, like I said, and groups are the central focus of Facebook right now. You're gonna start seeing groups in your newsfeed that you haven't even realized you were in for years. And you're gonna start seeing people posting in those groups because that's the direction Facebook is going. That's where the engagement is now happening. And so they're putting that in front of your face more than they've ever done that, more than they've ever done before. Yeah. Here's so some here's examples of successful Facebook groups. The P is for Peloton. Who's heard of Peloton? All right, good, they're getting more and more popular. Their Facebook group, is intense. You go on there, take a look at how many, they have just uh, over 100,000 people in there, but the ability for them to bring everybody together under one tribe is amazing. Take a look at them. Obviously, you know lab code agents. Grown and flown was something new to us. Yeah, that's a good that, one. That we were doing um, a little bit of a study on. Take a look at them, join those groups so you can see how they work. Now, Ad Espresso is great too. The Miracle, you know the Miracle Morning? Who's read the Miracle Morning before? Hal Elrod, very good. His, his tribe is super strong. It's got over 200,000 people yeah. in it. And you can see how they function. The reason we're on all these different groups is to be able to see how they work so that we know what we can do better and what we're doing great or where we lack at. Here, Love Livermore, you won't be able to join. It's got about 10,000 yeah. people. Nick. Love Livermore is a real estate specific group by a friend of ours in Northern California, and she has about 10,000 members in that group, and they all live in the area of Livermore, California. So the point of this is not to show you how to create a seven-figure real estate specific group, it's to show you how to create a real estate group, and it doesn't necessarily have to be about real estate. That's a community group where she doesn't really even talk about real estate, but half of her business every year is coming from it because she's building trust in the community. Yeah, you got it. So here, there's three chapters to this, even though there's 10 steps. Number one is passion. You see, when we, when we created Lab Code Agents, we weren't thinking about, well, let's make, let's make a million dollars in this. So let's make multi-millions in this. We were thinking, how can we help the average real estate agent understand what technology to use, 
what systems to implement so they can succeed in this business because it was lacking. And so that's where it came from. So we're gonna ask you, go to the, go to the next one. Um, there we go. We're gonna ask you this question and that's, what are you passionate about? It doesn't have to be about real estate. That community, that group that you create, it can be about cats. You like cats? Yeah, I, I like cats. Dude, you should start a cat group. There's a lot of cat groups, but mine would be different. If you like kayaking, if you like running, if you're great with your family, you like going out to trips, you want to tell people where to go, it doesn't just have to be real estate related, but at the end, people will know who you are and will create an avalanche of business for you yeah. if you do it right. So well, here's, I just want to go over a quick example of that. So another realtor friend of mine in Boca Raton, Florida, has a Facebook group uh, with, I think there's 10 or 15,000 people, and it's for local moms in the area. And $18 million of her business last year came from that group, a group about moms, not even about real estate. So that's really important to think about. Yeah. So these are the different types that we've come up with. Number one, special interest, kayak, cats, dogs, whatever you want to do. Type two, community type groups. They could be for a specific city. Let's say Arlington here around the corner. Or are we in Arlington? All right, Arlington here. You can go like the one that I have in Malibu or Newbury Park where I live, like that, where you focus in on the community and you help them understand what's happening in the area, what activities to do, interview the mayor, interview people that live in that community that can help them out. Number three, business groups, a company selling a product like the Peloton one. You've got Grant Cardone's as well, 10X, right? Ones like that, and type four, like us, uh, groups that people can, can belong to, that share a common goal here, that can help them grow in some way. Uh, those are the four types, so take a picture of that one, and then we'll tell you the next step. You have to brand it. Now, here's where a lot of people go wrong. Your logo is not your brand. Your logo is not your brand. In fact, our logo evolved over time because at first, we came up with the logo, which was the biggest mistake. What? Yeah, we, well, you're not really supposed to do you. that at first. And then when he did that, and I told him he was wrong, of course. <laughs> no, but likes, hold on, let's take a poll. Back. Who likes the lab, the dog? Who likes the dog? One person. See, no, if you raised your hand, off. you're dead to me. Okay, <laughs> so listen. The fact of the matter is, the logo was created first for us and then it evolved. But I highly recommend that you do the logo last and start thinking about what you're trying to accomplish, what message you're trying to put forward, what's your objective, right? Uh, your colors are very important when you do start to become clearer on your brand. The reason why we eventually chose the colors orange and red is because orange and red stand for happiness and positivity. And that's what we always try to do first. And you'll go into our group and you'll see a lot of agents are angry. <laughs> but it's up to us <laughs> to keep the positivity going. That's so um, and, but what the most important thing about your brand isn't necessarily what you think it is. It's how you're making your people feel. Because a brand is a feeling. If people feel good about it and they feel like they're a part of something, that's what your brand means to them. So the, your brand could mean something different to every single person. So sometimes Tristan and I will post, what does lab coats mean to you? And we'll get 100 comments and each single comment says something different. Yeah. And that's what our brand is. That's it, that's right. And so over time, your logo is going to evolve, right, to, to put forth a clearer mission of what you're doing. And so next year, we're releasing our new logo because Lab Code Agents is always trying to be in the forefront of technology and learning. And so with that, our logo is going to grow and further emanate the message we're trying to put forward. Yeah. What do you guys think about the new LCA logo? It looks a little cool, bit huh? cleaner. Right? I like it. I like it. I like it. All right, so the next step here, we learned this by accident, and that was building a strong team. We had a lot of failures on this part, but you need a strong team at the very beginning when you're building the community. When, when I created Lab Code Agents, I told my ISA at the time, his name's Jake Fry, 
I said, dude, we're going to have 100,000 people on this. And he looked at me like I was on drugs, and that was okay. And he came up with the slogan. He was one of the first people that I added as an admin along with other people. But at that point, I just needed help. And it wasn't until we brought in Nick and, that we started creating more of a company. And he, so I was a creator. We became the founders together. And then so we... A creator and a founder are different, just so you know. He created the group, and then when you bring in other people to help the group grow, then you become founders because then you each put your, your different visions together. You got it. And then we founded it as a company. But the key here is finding the right team to be able to grow your group, your community. We're going to show you some steps here to be able to do that. But it's key that you bring in people that have the same vision as you do. Even though we approach it a little differently, we still have the same vision. We agree on, on how to be able to reach our one goal. Even though we do it a little differently, we make it happen together. And that's what you have to look for. People that still can execute on your vision. Similar to what Sam Walton did at the very beginning, he had a vision, he brought in people that could help him achieve that. So you, we were treating it as a business maybe a year in. And you could do the same thing with groups because there's a big opportunity here. You just have to have this process for the next one. Yeah, so you have to find your tribe. That is very, very important. You guys are hyperfast agent tribe and we have <clears throat> our lab coats tribe and the tribe is made up of two things that are equally important your content and the people in your community because the content that you are putting out into the world at first is go and continuously is going to attract like-minded people so the two are, are are exact same slices of the pie what you are driving out into your community, and then it's gonna attract the people that relate to what you're saying. Yeah, you're either gonna push people away, you're gonna find your tribe, or you're gonna bring in people that, that are gonna be really sold on what it is that you're bringing to the table. The key is focus on content that's bringing value. A lot of the times we see people just spamming groups. We're like, hey, I'm selling this, hey, I'm selling that, hey, come to this. Hey, come to that with no clear understanding that it's the value that keeps people coming back, right? It's that fear of missing out on what else we're innovating on, what else we're bringing to the table that can help you grow. If you do that in a community, in a community setting that's specific to your community, whether it's here in Arlington or other places where now you're showing people what's happening in the neighborhood, what's new, where they can go and have fun as a family, what activities they can participate in, you're bringing value rather than saying, hey, I'm a real estate agent, which they already know, and if they don't, they'll find out anyway through that value that you bring. But it's all in the approach because that's the tribe you're gonna attract to yourself. That's part of the community. So number five, find your top tribe members. This is again what we did yeah. by accident. So yeah. This is really important. So as your group begins to grow, you're gonna realize who your strongest supporters are. And those are people that you're gonna to wanna to love on like crazy more than anybody else. So it's gonna start off small, whether it be 100 or 500, and then as you grow, it's gonna be 1,000. And the way that you're gonna figure out who your top supporters are is Facebook's gonna tell you. Yep. It's gonna show you who the most active people in your group are, who posts the most, who comments the most, who participates in viewing webinars and so on and so forth. You're going to be able to see who those people are and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you specifically have a system for thanking them, for giving them you know, whatever type of swag, which we'll get to in a minute, like hats, t-shirts. Invite them to your events if you have some. You know, just give them that special treatment because they're gonna be your voice. Because believe me, the people that don't like you are gonna be very loud. So you need to care about the ones that love you and Facebook will let you know who those people are. It's important. All right, growth. Lots of different ways to grow. I'll let Tristan do it because I just talked a lot. Thank you, sir. No problem. Appreciate that. All right, so growth. Uh, number one way that we grew was organically. It was word of mouth. Uh, people did start to see that we were bringing a lot of value and were inviting their friends and that was really important to us. A lot of people say, well, you paid for your growth. We didn't. We, we actually didn't. We actually have never paid no. to, for membership of the, of the group. It has all been organic. Next, 
yeah. team up with other people, whether it's people that are in the industry that can help you out, other influencers, bringing, in, bringing them in, doing webinars, doing lives. And what happens is now you bring their audience and you expose their audience to yours and they wonder who, who are these who are these guys? Well, who are these people? They're pretty good. And if you're approaching it with remember, a value, con contributive mentality, it's going to be a lot. And people are going to stick around and they'll be like, I like these people. They're my tribe. You're still going to find people that don't like you and that's okay. All right, but number three, create an email list. Uh, one of the things that we learned by accident is that email lists are not dead. It's spam email lists that are dead, <laughs> right? Yeah. You get emails every day and it's just a bunch of crap. You're like, oh, it's this person again, spam. Oh, it's this person again. I don't want to read their crap. But if you're very selective on the emails that you send out, or you're giving value and you're giving content that people can learn from, all of a sudden that turns around and that becomes one of your greatest assets. So building that email from the very beginning. So when people join your group, you get an option of three questions put in there. One of them should be, hey, would you like to join my newsletter? I won't spam you. I'll send you content, information, valuable information in the area. Just leave your email there. And what you do is you grab that email and you put it into your list. And then the other questions can be like, are you awesome? Right? Which we had for a while. We did have one. Are you awesome? I loved are you awesome. Yeah. Uh, but that's the idea. Number four, put some money behind your videos and post on your business page. Lead them back to the group. You can do that too. We use that for branding still. So a lot of the webinars that we do, some of the great blogs that we have, some of the great content, we don't use it to bring them back. Uh, we don't use them to come into our group for the first time. We use them to bring them back, so for branding. And that helps a lot with that whole fear of missing out. It's like, oh, I haven't been to Lab Coats for a while. I need to come back. Yeah, a great, a great uh, feature for a newsletter would be featuring the most engaged posts of that week. You know, saying, hey, jump in on this conversation if you missed it, and that will bring people back to your group uh, to start engaging in posts that they care about, which is another really great idea. So like Tristan said, it's not spam if people get value from it. All right. What so, happens is your group takes off and somebody starts to take notice. Yep. So for us, it was the real estate industry in 2014, where Realtor.com liked our, liked our discussions about converting internet lead generation, so we partnered with them on a few things. Commissions Inc., uh, Tristan was an, uh, an avid Commissions Inc. user, and they started taking notice of that and asked him to uh, start training their, their, uh, their, their customers. Um, Espresso Agent, this is an example of uh, which we'll get into later with affiliates and sponsorship. Espresso Agent noticed the size of our group and they were a startup at the time and they asked us if we could help launch their product, which we did and we brought them from zero to 700 users in about a year. Um, and then Inman saw us and they started to uh, give us some opportunities there. And then Facebook saw that we were leveraging groups unlike other people were leveraging groups. Like we kind of got into groups on the ground floor, just kind of not knowing uh, really where it would go. And so now Facebook is pushing groups out at a really high level and they're creating lots of new free features just around groups and we're super honored to, we got to be a part of that, co uh, that collaboration with them. So when you start to create a group in a specific niche, there's a really good chance that people are gonna take notice in that industry that your that your group is about yeah and don't be afraid to shift as you go through this because what you find is that you have an idea of what you want to create but what happens along the line is that the people that are part of the group the community they're going to guide you maybe a slightly different way and then there are a lot of opportunities if you just stay open-minded to that as well uh, this is one of our favorite quotes by seth godin Marketing is about spreading ideas, and spreading ideas is the single most important output of our civilization. This is what allows us to move from one place or one thought to another, and it's, it's really the basis of your community, right? Going back to Sam Walton, he had an idea, right? And he shifted it into reality with action. And so it's the same thing. It's not about the money. It's about whatever you were passionate about. If you wanna spread that, you go all in. You don't half-ass it. And this is an opportunity right now. You, you, who remembers back in, in 
the late 90s, if you were around, early 2000s, when people started saying, you know what, this internet thing is, uh, is pretty cool, right? Yeah. This, uh, this is amazing. And everybody just kind of just sat around saying the same thing. Not a lot of people did anything. Well, you have another opportunity here through Facebook, of all things, in creating communities that can level you up to, to heights that you're not even imagining right now, just from a simple free community. And we're trying to show you right here that there's millions just sitting in front of you, and we're giving you the process. You just have to take it. There's, there's just massive value in this. So if you're not paying attention and you're falling asleep in the back, I can't see you, first of all. Um, wake up, because this is gonna last a long time. It's only gonna be here probably for a year and a half, two years more, before these places are saturated. And it's gonna be harder for you to take hold onto your idea and grow it. Okay. How to make money, how to monetize the group. We all want to know how to do that, right? Well, this uh, happened by accident. I want to tell you. Yeah, this was an accident. This, is, this happened. So when we created the group, we're like, this is cool, this is amazing. And then we had people telling us, yeah, 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 but why are you spending all your time in this group and community if you're not making any money? It's just a waste of time. And we're like, no, no, we believe in this. This is a, this is a mission of ours. We want to change the industry. We want to help agents, right? And like, yeah, it's, it's Facebook's a waste of time. And then I met Nick. And then everything changed. And then my world changed. And then it just went through the roof. It was that easy. It was that easy. And then he said, Tristan, you know, have, you, have you ever thought about monetizing this? And I'm like, no, how would we monetize this? I said, well, let me tell you. You did. No, so what you have to understand is the, you have to monetize the right way. If you're going to create affiliate, at first we created affiliate relationships. But you have to understand, if you're going to partner with people, you have to believe in who you're partnering with. And that's one of the things that we made a specific, uh, a specific uh, intention to do. Yeah. If you're going to partner with companies uh, or entities that you don't believe in, it's going to backfire. So we started with affiliates, and we found out really quick that wasn't the best model because our members didn't appreciate that we would make money in a directly response that was directly responsible to them purchasing a product. And so we got rid of affiliate marketing, but that's a great way to start. Plus it was really hard to track for those of you yeah. trying affiliates. It's really tough to decide how our customer, how our clients gets to that product if they first heard it from us, but then they heard it somewhere else and like, oh, that's right, we heard it in lab coats. And then they end up there anyway without tracking it to where they really came from. And that was a challenge for us. So yeah. we let that go. And then events, you know, we have real estate events, um, but if you're gonna do an event for a group that you're thinking of, let's, you know, use cats as an example. Dude, I'd go to that you event. You could have like a cat play date. I don't know how these things work. I or I think a dog play date. A dog play date. Like, cats don't like in a play dog dates. Park. Cats are very antisocial. Yeah, they, won't, they won't work with cats. That probably would not work. Forget I said a cat play date. But you get the point. If you have a kayak, you use kayak a lot. I don't know why he uses kayak so much. B dodgeball. Okay, dodgeball. Dude, dodgeball would be cool. Dodgeball is a great idea for a group. I like dodgeball. You could have dodgeball events and have local, like the local sports you shop or something. The dodgeball sponsor movie it. Playing in the background. Yeah, you could. If you can dad, dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball, Tristan. I like that. All right. Really so events, very, very important. And the reason why when, at our events that our vendors do so well is because they're vendors that we partner with for so long and our audience has gotten to know who they are. So yep. that's why it's really important to really believe in who you're, who you're partnering with. And that way when they sponsor your events, the people who are at the event are already familiar with them. And then ads and sponsorships. So that's where we moved from affiliate to sponsorship. We don't do affiliate anymore. We do straight up marketing sponsorships because it's not directly connected to a sale. And that builds a lot more trust. You know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't matter how many people buy into this, it's not directly tied to Nick and Tristan making money. Yeah, well we decided, well, what products are we using? What are we succeeding with? And you can do the same thing with your community. If it's, I'm gonna use that whole kayak thing or, or the dodgeball one, but with kayak, if you're using a specific kayak, and you're using specific products, like your gear, that you know work. Hey, I'm using your product, it's been doing great for us. This is, this is who I can expose you to, 
pay us a certain amount and we can expose you to these people. and that you can create products. So what we did imagine from the very beginning when we, when we created the logo and we redesigned the same thing. The logo, the brand that you're creating, can you put it on a shirt? Can you put, would people wear it? Think of that, and then that might change your logo. So products that we create, you can also team up, which we'll show you with other companies to create products and influence those products that are out there for that specific community. Uh, this, for us, uh, we call it kind of the, the ultimate thing that could happen. Somebody can buy your community or we haven't. We, we've had a few offers, but we're not ready yet. We've had a few offers. We've had, now we have probably like 10 to 12 a year on, hey, we want to buy you. Hey, we want to buy you. And we're like, no, we're not for sale. We're just not for sale. I mean, we... <laughs> It just depends. I mean, well, I listen, mean, maybe we're not for sale. We're not for sale with what we've been yes. offered. Yeah. It's been in the you know low I mean? millions. So, uh, buyout and or partner. I hope now. don't tell people that, Tristan. Well, I'm just kidding. Listen, there's a price for everything. But yes, that is definitely an ultimate, an ultimate, uh, an ultimate goal at some point. And this right here, we again figured it out by accident. So we reverse engineered it for you. So you're able to see what you need when you actually create a company from a group or from a community. This is who you need. You need an attorney. Uh, we had to go through three different attorneys to figure out how to create an LLC from a Facebook group. They're like, what is this? I'm like, it's a Facebook group, and there's people. And they're like, okay. So that was tough. We had to call up different attorneys in Silicon Valley so they could figure out uh, the um, intellectual property from this, how we could do this with a Facebook group. So make sure that you find an attorney who understands Social media, first of all. Uh, next, CPA, and then uh, an org chart so you understand what your duties are, who's involved, what they're going to be doing on a daily basis, and then employees or virtual assistants. Yeah. And that's pretty much the highlight of how we run the group of how it's organized. So it's really important because, listen, Facebook's here today, but you know, I don't know where it's gonna be in 10 years, right? So it's important that once your group starts to grow, we mentioned before, collect emails, names, and phone numbers so you can build that database and then also start to branch outside of Facebook. Because if tomorrow Facebook goes away, Tristan and I are prepared, right? So you want to be prepared as well. So you want to start offering value outside of the group. Like blogs, our blog has about, you know, at this point, like seven, 800 blogs written for agents by agents all over the country. Uh, we now have a podcast and we have uh, some of our own products, Lab Code Agents Marketing Center, which is specific real estate agent designs for social media and print. And also we have swag products like hats and shirts and bottles and the whole nine. But the thing about this is, like I said before, if Facebook disappears tomorrow, we're prepared, right? If, if you start a group and Facebook disappears, you are now building this brand outside of Facebook. You're not dependent on them anymore, and it, continued, it can continue to grow. So definitely at some point start thinking about how you can take the group off of Facebook and bring it out uh, into other forms of media. Yeah, here's, here's number 10. It's probably the biggest challenge that, you, that we face as a community, only because we're part of a culture that, that really focuses on growth in the sense that growth or money equals growth and if you just step outside of that and figure that that's too fixed that only lasts a year two years three years because that number is always changing you start to think maybe i should be focusing on something else so in simon sinek's new book you can pick it up it's called the infinite game it just came out three weeks ago he talks about an infinite mindset and so going back to what Sam Walton created with Walmart, you think an infinite mindset is one that creates something or starts something with the idea that this is gonna outlast my lifetime. Whatever I'm creating is going to impact the world, impact my community, impact the people around me in a way that's gonna outlast me. And the challenge is most people right now, when you talk to them in these startups and these companies, they think, well, how can I make the most money right now? I'm already thinking of an exit strategy. 
And that's the wrong mindset. So you think, an infinite mindset is not something that's finite. All right, look at, look at what it says there on the infinite. The infinite player is playing to keep playing. And the objective is not to win. Because what happens when you win? There's a loser. That's not how the person who has an infinite mindset thinks. So I'm bringing this all together because Sam Walton believed that I can serve a greater amount of people and make a greater amount of opportunity for people if I do this. What is that, this for you? I'll go to the next one right there. This is what Simon Sinek said. He said, that we will leave our organizations in better shape than we found them and that we will build organizations that inspire other people to want to continue to build them without us. If you have that mindset from the very beginning, you create something like we've created. Something that transcends us. It doesn't even have our name on it. You create a group, a tribe, a community that can outlast us. Our hope is that when we're gone, we've, we've changed the industry as a whole because guess what? NAR isn't doing it for us. That leaves us. And by the way, you made a really good point just now that we didn't mention before. It doesn't have our name on it. I mean, sure, people associate Nick and Tristan with lab coats, um, but we're, our, our, our names are not prominently featured with the brand, right? So really, I'm gonna get geeky for you, with you for a second. Lab coat agents is kind of like Batman, where anyone could be Batman and anyone could be a lab coat agent. That's right. And so that's the legacy that we're, that we're attempting to leave behind. Yeah, because we're being bombarded by, by companies in our industry that are trying to take what, what we've created as agents for 100 years. And this is normal, right? Disruptors like Zillow, Redfin, Open Door, and who knows what else is going to come our way. But nobody's in our corner. It seems like we're all segmented. Even NAR doesn't know what to do, right? And we've taken it on as a responsibility to be to be the ones that can gather everybody together and say, hey, look, there is, there is something that you can do. There's innovation, and we can bring that to you through education. Because the more we learn and the more we understand what's out there, the more we're better prepared to take it on. And that's our job. So find what your passion is and show that to the world. Right? But you don't have a lot of time to do it. Not in Facebook groups. You've got a year, two years max. And keep that in the back of your mind. And by the way, I've already claimed dodgeball, so. <laughs> so yeah. we're done. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our shows. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching our video. I hope you liked it. Give it a quick like below and comment and share. We'd love your feedback. For more videos like this, click here. And to subscribe, click here.